Right, so let's look at HTMX website. Uh, go over its documentation. See what could be good use cases to use it. And general news about it. So first, what is HTMX? So basically, it's 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 related to HTML, of course, because it's called HTMX. Um, when you have a website and you have HTML in this uh, website, then in order to make this the the basic structure to get new data, I mean, we can host just an HTML page, and that's it. That would be a static page and if it's not connecting on any button click or whatever to any server then it's fully static it's not changing uh, the content so the big question is how do we change the content of web pages once the users are making actions so if the user is making a click, the question is then, how do we change the content? For this, there were, once the user clicks the login button, how do we make a request to the server? How do we respond with the, with the content back to the user? That, that is the big question, right? And for that, there are plenty of solutions from a JavaScript Ajax request to to just a button click on a form where in the form you specify where to go in the server and then from a link right an href of a website is, is going to make a call get a new page and go to that link to react that manages and then changes part of your web pages. Okay, so, so uh, and we have all these web frameworks and everything, and everything revolves around how do we change? How does the world change? How does the HTML page changes? Do, do we want to render the whole page? Do we want to render part of the page? Do we change the URL? Oh, okay. All this revolves around these simple, basic questions, and there are different solutions for different kinds of problems. And and um, this, some of these solutions require you to to learn frameworks and become a front-end developer with years of experience and deep knowledge in React or Angular or whatever, and deep understanding of these frameworks. This contradicts the, the, the simplicity of HTML. I mean, when you look in the simple HTML page, it's simple. Why do we need to involve all these complex frameworks to learn them for years, to, 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 to see all these abstractions? So the answer is, is that if you are going to maintain a whole product, then this could make sense, right? This could make sense. But sometimes you, you're not building a whole company, right? It's not the end of the world if the, you would find a way to keep the HTML page simple and add some, some methods to the actual HTML. That would assist you in updating the HTML page. Okay, so as this is what HTMX is trying to see. As you see, HTM, so it's mostly HTML, but it's extending it. This is the premise of HTMX. The premise of HTMX is write your HTML as usual, incorporate a couple of uh, tags there that would fetch contact from the server. It's not going to be super complex, such as React, etc. It's not going to be abstractions and the backend that generates things. You just want to get some content from the server, right? So just say in the HTML, I want to get some content in the 
from the server, just say, and replace this div when the content arrives. You can do it with JavaScript, but do we want now JavaScript code to maintain and understand what it's doing? And so we'll have two languages in the HTML, the JavaScript and the HTML. HTMX, extension of HTML. Let's continue reading this. Introduction. HTMX gives you access to Ajax, CSS transitions, WebSockets, okay, so it's not, okay, and server send events directly in HTML. So Ajax is async calls, CSS transitions is how things, uh, probably update, I'm not full sure, CSS, let's see what CSS transitions are, probably updates to the, let's skip this, probably updates to the website with CSS, WebSocket is a protocol, right? In order to make the website more dynamic, a server sent event is you open a connection and the server keeps sending you back responses. All this deal with the, uh, the important thing, the important common thing to Ajax is a transition WebSocket and server sent events is that all these make websites dynamic. So what they say, HTML gives you access to dynamic website changers directly in HTML. This is what they're saying here. Using attributes so you can build modern user interfaces with the simplicity and power of hypertext. HTMX is small, 14K, depends if free, extensible, IE 11 compatible, has reduced code base size, blah, blah. Motivation. We discussed it a little bit. Let's see what exactly they say. Motivation. Why should only an A anchor in the form be able to make HTTP requests? Why should only click and submit events trigger them? Why should only get and post methods be available in the HTML? Why should only be able to replace the entire screen with, H with plain HTML? By removing these arbitrary constraints, HTMX complete HTML as hypertext. Quick start. Script SRC, HTMX, so we include the HTMX script. And now we have here a button called click me. That, and here are the HTMX tags. We say when someone clicks the button, hx post, make a post request to slash clicked and swap, replace the outer HTML of this button. Replace basically the content. Okay, so what happens when we make a button request? You see it's simple. You see it's inside, inlined, inside the HTML. We didn't need JavaScript. It looks also good, intuitive. Okay, so we are now able with these tags to communicate with the server, get back content and change the website and parts of the website because we said change only the outer HTML. Okay, so we have here a button when someone clicks this, go make a post request, HTTP post request, swap the outer HTML. Okay, the HTTP post and the HTTP swap attributes on this button, the HTMX. When a, when a user clicks on this button, issue an Ajax request to slash clicked and replace the entire button with the HTML response. HTMX is successor to intercooler.js with the docs. Okay, so, so it looks like if you want to create something, some side project or even an internal project, or, I would claim also for bigger projects, th this could be great, excellent, right? Especially that they are, they are getting more and more traction. I mean, the safe bet today would be, of course, to use React, right? This would be the safe bet. But for a side project, perfect. And, and I can expect I, I can expect, it's not something totally imaginary, that in a couple of years, this would become more and more mainstream also for companies, for internal tools, 
it will start with internal tools and go uh, to more places. I mean, this is something to stay, as I see it. It's not, it's not some hype. News, we are excited to announce that HGMX has been accepted into the first classes of GitHub Open Source Accelerator. This means that GitHub says, okay, here is an open source. I want to support them. I will give them $20,000. I will give them some mentoring and help them make this open source uh, both a more known accelerate, accelerator, right? Like why combinator accelerator for companies, this would be an accelerator for uh, open sources. Okay, so let, let's go a little bit also about the documentation and then we'll cut this docs. Okay, so Okay, so this is the documentation. Let's see, they have some Ajax, triggering, special events, indicators, swapping thing, synchronization, out of bands. Well, ba basically, WebSockets and server-side events means we get dynamically content from the server. So documentation HTMX is library that allows you to access modern web browser features directly from HTML rather than using a JavaScript. To understand HTMX, first let's take a look at the anchor tag. Anchor href block. This anchor tag tells the browser when a user clicks on this link, issue an HTTP GET request to the slash block and load the response content into the browser window. With that in mind, consider the following bit of HTML. Button hxbox slash click, hx trigger click, hx target, target, some div, HX swap some outer HTML. This tells HTMX when a user clicks this button, issue an HTTP post request, post to slash clicked, and use the content from the response to replace the element with the ID uh, parent div in the DOM. And the trigger for this would be a button click. HTMX extends and generalizes the core ID of HTML as a hypertext, opening up many more possibilities directly within the language. Now any element, not just anchors and forms, can issue HTTP requests. Now any element, not just clicks or form submissions, can trigger requests. Now any HTTP verb, not just get and post, can be used. Now any element, not just the entire window, can be the target for update. Target of that, we want to update something specific, some specific div. Note that when you are using HTMX on the server side, you typically respond with HTML, not JSON. Okay, so this is important. Usually when we make a request to the server, we get back a JSON. Now they say you just repost, return the HTML. This is both good and bad. I think that for our use case, it's good because we are trying to keep things in HTML. JSON is another like structure. You need to pass it. You need to decide what to do with the JSON. Now not. Just return the HTML. I like this. I mean, you can claim that by doing this, we are um, mixing up like presentation layer HTML with JSON data. So yeah, again, if you have a product, Airbnb or booking.com, you might want to return a JSON, right? But if you have some internal tool or website, you might want to keep things simple. There is a boundary between having things simple and making things complex unnecessary. There are some use cases that should be complex with JSON, but there are some many other use cases that should not. This keeps you firmly within the original web property model using hypertext as the engine of application state without even needing to really understand the concept. It's worth mentioning that if you prefer, you can use the data prefix when using a gmx. I don't think this changes anything. You just prefix it with data to make things clearer. May or maybe, I mean, they didn't mention if it's doing any change. Okay. Installation HTMX is dependency free browser oriented JavaScript library. This means that using uh, it as a simple adding a script doc to your document had no need for complicated build steps or systems. Yeah, I forgot to mention this with React and all these libraries. 
you are going to a hell of dependencies that you add and builds and compatibilities in between versions. This has just saved you all of this. If you are migrating from HMX to Intercooler, please see the migration from Intercooler to HMX via CDN. Okay, so we can get it from CDN, we can get it from local copy, from NPM, from Webpack. Ajax, the core of HTMX is a set of attributes that allow you to issue an Ajax request directly from HTML, HTMX get, get request, post request, put request, patch request, and delete request. Each of these attributes takes a URL to an issue and Ajax request to the element with issue request to the specified tag to give URL when the element is triggered. HX put, put to messages. This tells the browser when the user clicks, on this div, issue a put request to the URL slash messages and load the response into the div. Triggering request by default Ajax requests are triggered by the natural event of the element input external, are triggered on the change event, form is triggered on the submit event, everything else is triggered on the click event. If you want different behavior, you can use the HX trigger. Trigger modifiers trigger can also have additional Modifiers that change its behavior, for example, you want to request only uh, happen once, you can use the once modifier. Okay, let's look uh, some other interesting things. Polling. Polling is interesting. So polling would mean, I'm let's say I upload the file, and uh, this is going to take a couple of minutes and I want to show some true progress. If you want an element to poll for a given URL rather than, I mean, th this is what could be one of the use cases. If you want an element to poll for a given URL rather than wait for an event, you can use the every syntax with the HX trigger attribute. Every two seconds. Yeah, I, c I can tell you I saw so many systems that uh, this can make them <laughs> so, so much simple. So yeah, we don't return JSON, we return HTML, but I think this could work. This does HTMX every two, I mean, we, we can return HTML with CSX classes and, okay. Every two seconds, if you get to news and load the response into the div, if you want to stop polling from a server response, you can respond with HTTP response code 286. So from the server, you can tell guy HTMX, it's finished. Load polling, another technique that can be used to achieve polling in HTMX is load polling. When an element specified a load trigger, along with a delay and replaces itself with a response. If the slash messages endpoint keeps returning a div set up this way, it will keep pulling the back, end, back to the URL every seconds. Load polling can be useful in situations where the poll is an endpoint at which point the polling terminates such as when you're showing a progress bar. Let's see how the... Let's see the progress bar and then we'll finish it. Where is the progress bar? If the slash messages endpoint keeps returning a div setup this way, uh -huh. so it will, so it trusts the server to keep returning this thing. And once the server returns something else, then. Okay, I think, um, what is this? Well, the HTMX indicator, okay, we can customize stuff can specify what is the target, we can extend CSS selectors, we can decide what, what do we store up. The inner HTML by default puts the content inside the target, outer HTML replaces the entire target element after begin, prepends the content, morphemes, morphem, 
Morphdom Swap based on the Morphdom, the origin of Morphing Library. So how it animates the changes. View Transition API gives developer a way to create animated transition. Okay, so this is kind of advanced synchronization. Often you want to coordinate a request between two elements. Okay, so if something just I want something else to change. For example, you may want a request from one element to supersede the request from another element or wait until the other element request has finished. Max offer HX sync attribute to help you accomplish this. Consider risk condition between a form submission and individual input validation. Without using HSIC, filling uh, out the input and immediately submitting the form triggers two parallel requests to the validate and store. Yeah. You want first the validate. Using HSIC sync closest form abort on the input will watch for request on form. So first it will trigger this HX post, validate and then the input request, if a form request is present, starts the whole requesting flag. This resolves the synchronization between two elements in a declarative way. HTMX also supports programmatic way to cancel requests. You can send HTMX a bot event to an element to cancel. So we have here a button cancel and we're canceling which, which request, ah, trigger, we specify here that we want to cancel this one. Okay, and that's it. <clears throat> so I think HMX is is uh, is great. I think the first use case is side project. The second use case is internal company projects. And the third project, which requires some more examination work, is actual company projects, actual user-facing projects. But it looks like it can do it. I mean, if I look at websites and what they do, also user-facing websites, what do they do? They make requests <laughs> to the service, right? They get some response, they update the screen, they show some progress bars, and... Usually that's it, unless you have super, super fancy things in which things also get complex. Maybe just leave everything to the server side. I mean, there are these single page uh, web apps, which I think we should be careful about. Uh, it's better to have distinct URLs for different web pages and different uh, things and not just a specific URL, but so, so, uh, in general, this is elegant. I think this should be used more often. And I hope that now that they have the GitHub uh, acceleration on this, it would get more traction. I'm pretty sure we'll hear about this a lot. This is, this is going to, to catch on fire, maybe, I think. This was HDMX.